Hey everybody, so getting ready to do video uh, part two, I guess, of this Gorf troubleshooting. But this is how I end up from not wanting, not planning to actually do a video um, to going off the rails and all types of stuff. So it was real loud, the volume was real loud on the last video of the gameplay. So I took out the amp board and then I went to power it on. And it seems like that amp board with the service switch is required to boot. Um, so anyway, let's go to the um, bench and then I'll show you what I'm okay, doing. Okay, so slight distraction, but anyway, the um, the pots were really scratchy. So I removed the amp board and um, these, these pots look to be sealed from as far as I can tell, but I did, you know, try to get some deoxid in there and it has these, uh, you know, these potentiometers. Um, it's 200 ohm, I guess and they're both registering correctly but they were just really scratchy so i wanted to clean them up and then i went and spent a couple hours online trying to find something very similar to this and you just you can't like a Dig digikey or mouser you could probably have one manufactured from the vendor which is um amp uh let's see if you can see that it's amp um pi or p-i-h-e-r um amp owns them now so but anyway, so that's what that's what I did. Um, so I'm going to put this back together so I can actually put it in the game and hopefully boot it up. Um, okay, that's what got I'm the doing. amp board back together and and um, in the cabinet plugged in. Let's hope that's what it was. We'll power it on. Oh boy, what happened? All right, so maybe something else is up. I thought maybe it was the amp board that I removed was required, but let's go ahead and put it in test mode, see if we get anything. We got some type of weird stuff going on in test mode, so. Uh, I don't even know if we took a step forward to take a step back, but this is definitely not right. Let me... Um, if it's um, a static RAM issue, we can put in the test um, ROM and see what it will okay, we get. The test that. ROM in there. And it says it's okay. The, the SRAM, it says the SRAM's okay. We'll try um, a different game Actually, board, I, I guess. Put, I just put in um, my foreign board here, my foreign uh, ROM with the static RAM. It's powered on. All right, same, whoop. Getting some type of reset or something. Okay, well that looks better, right? So, at least, but it's still not booting all the way. But th this in test mode with the uh, foreign RAM board, um, so it might be a, a static RAM issue on, on the board. Well, <laughs> but why isn't it booting and playing then? I can't coin up. Okay, I put in a, a different game board that I recently picked up. Um, and I had tried it before I started this video, and I know that it works. So um, let's see what happens here. Game boots. So we got now we have a bigger problem on our other game board potentially with those customs um, it was giving us you know weird behavior before I see that our graphic glitch is gone yeah you can hear it almost whistling though in the audio a little bit Let's see if, um, 
yeah, no more scratching. So spraying deoxid on that definitely worked. Yeah, but it's kind of whistling a little bit when it talks. And and there's no with this game board, there's none of that. Um, we'll do it again. I don't know why. Why is it giving me six credits though, or six? Oh, credit ships three. All right, there we go. Um, you can see that also our other graphic issue is gone. So I'm wondering if it's the uh, customs, the I/O customs on the game board is what my issue was to begin with. All right, um, I was thoroughly expecting to actually do some, you know, testing of different components beyond the customs on this game board. This is a uh, game board A or game board one um, that initially had our, you know, a funny graphics issue uh, with on the initial screen as well as with the horizontal um, space invaders and galaxians and stuff um, it could be the customs or it could be some ttl chips here this game board here this is game board c um, and the game plays perfectly fine with this one but unfortunately and we can identify it because it's missing one of these um, removal leverage things there um this seems to play fine, but there's actually in the sound circuit, there's a, a little bit of like whistling when Gorf speaks. It's like like that a little bit. Um, so it, you know, not a hundred percent, but the game plays perfect. And then I have game board. Where's my other game board at? I have one more game board, game board B. Right, and this is game board B. Definitely has some issues with the, the uh, chips, the, the customs are a little bit corroded and stuff. I replaced the sockets on this one. And when I used the customs from game board A in this one, the graphics issue um, on the initial screen was not there, but the graphics issue with the Space Invaders was. So it leads me to believe that we have possibly a custom, you know, a data. These are custom IO chips on the ga game board. We could have a problem there. Um, but we could also have a different problem on this game board as well that's unrelated to the uh, customs. So let me think about what I want to do. I think I want to take um, these customs and put it in this game board and see what the behavior is. And I'm going to label these. I'll label these customs um, A, A, B, uh, C, D, and then E, F. I'll label that. Okay, one. another interesting thing here is uh, game board C... You can see the letters pretty clearly on these customs, and um, the model number is, I can't really, is that second number, is um, the 0066117XX. I'm pretty sure that's like the part number for GORF, yeah. Um, but if you see AMI8119, FW, both of them are the same. 119 FW. So we know it appears that these chips were original to this board and probably a little bit newer. And this is game board A, and I'm pretty sure I've swapped these customs around with something else. So I don't think these are original, but um, one of them is an 8117, same, same model number, but you see 8117, and then that one says 8116, and it's a little bit more worn. So it does look like you know, the lower that number, 8117, is older than 8119. 8116 is older than, um, um, et cetera. And then on game board B, you can barely see them. But one is, um, see if you can actually, got to kind of get an angle. Like that one is, uh, looks like 811005, which is really probably old. And this one is 115, I'm pretty sure. Um, you, can't bar you can barely see it. I had to look at a magnifying glass. So, you know, you're looking at super old, a little bit newer to, to most new, <laughs> um, I think. That's what I'm... I'm okay, we have uh, the A and B customs in um, the C board. 
and I think on my previous video I said you had to have um, at least a good custom in X2 for it to boot. Um, it, it's actually X3, I'm pretty sure. So X3, if you have a good custom, the game should boot. Um, but let's go ahead and check this out. What we're hoping for is that this actually does boot up fine, um, and then we know that the problem somewhere else. Got it in there. Board. We're hoping that this boots fine, and it does, which is good. That means our customs are most likely up. Definitely something with the custom. Look at that right there. Wacky. We're, um, so one of the customs is definitely having a problem, I guess. That's why we're getting that little glitch there. Let's go ahead and... Still get that whist whistling, so that's unique. Yep. And we have that um, crap going on there. All right, so something is going on with this customs. Let's try... Um, what are we going to do here? Let's try swapping them around. All right, but the game booted with the exact same symptoms that we initially had on this game board C. Why wasn't it booting on this game board A with the same customs in the same location? That doesn't make sense because it was working before. So I'm wondering if we should go back to uh, game board A. Um, or what? I'm trying to think here. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. If I'm going to swap them anyway, let's go back to game board A and see if we can get this uh, game board working. So obviously something's going on with it. Uh, maybe with the header okay, pane. Instead of so. um, in increasing number of variables here, we'll just stick with game board C. Customs are swapped from B to A. Um, so X30, X3 has B now versus A, and X2 has A. Not all of the pins are used, and um, I'd have to look look to see which one. But not all the all the uh, pins are used on both of them. That's why it's you can switch them and right, get got, a different. Got result. it back in there. We're still booting. Still have the weird graphics issue does look a little bit different, but we're still booting. Oh, now our sound is way off. Yep. All right. We definitely have some type of issue with those customs, so. Crap. Um, let me figure out what I'm going to do now. Okay, uh, so... What I decided to do was um, use, <clears throat> I didn't have any um, fiberglass pens or anything, so I used um, an eraser to try to clean up the A and B chip um, uh, le chip legs, and I also used some deoxit and put it in game board B. I haven't put this in the game yet. Um, the reason I put it in game board B is because I know that these sockets are, I just replaced them, so I figured let's new sockets, clean the legs, and see what we get. And I also broke out the schematic because um, when we had B, the B chip over in X3, um, our sound was jacked up, right? And, um, and I think back into video one, I might have swapped the positions, and that's why we had um, our audio was jacked up in that board as well. What leads me to believe that is, or it was it was the audio for the Gorf voice, I think, or something. But what leads me to believe that is, um, here's on the schematic, you have you know, the X2 chip and the X3. The first thing, as I mentioned, is X3 is required because it is the one that has the watchdog. Um, so if something is uh, not correct on the chip or whatever, it'll um, reboot the, the, the CPU, et cetera, or something like that. Um, the other thing that's interesting is X3 is the one that has all of its signal lines, which are all the inputs, like player one. It's like almost like a switch matrix. 
here. I know this is going to be kind of hard to see, but anyway, there, you know, player player one up, down, left, right, coins, all that stuff comes into this resistor. There's pull up resistors up here, and then um, some capacitors down there, and those come in and are labeled like what the input is, and those get kind of mucks together um, through these ch chips right here, U1, U2, and then get fed into X3. On X2, all of those inputs, S10 through S17, are all grounded, so they're not even used. So like X2 is the less used chip, obviously, on, on the um, out of the two customs. And it looks like the MUX data comes in, and from what I can tell, it looks like X2 is driving, um, based off of that th those data inputs, it's probably driving um, the best I can tell. The really the only thing it's driving is this audio. Um, and that audio line comes down here and goes probably to, I don't know what these are, Q, they're not amplifiers, but Q3 um, and Q1, and then that goes to audio 2. And the audio line from X3, if you can see that, sorry, freaking shadow. Um, the audio line from X3 goes down and is kind of joins up with the speech chip. And that comes out X4, X2 over to audio line 1. So when, you, when we swapped them and we, did, we had weird speech, um, I'm thinking that, you know, the worst off of the two customs, or maybe the only one that's bad, I'm not sure, was put into uh, X3. Um, so anyway, that's where, that's where we're at. The bottom line is X3 is more important than X2, but both are needed to drive audio, with X2 looking like it's driving the sound effects probably, and, and um, X3 is potentially driving the um, speech, or, or one, one's driving one channel, one's driving the other or something. So let's go ahead and put this board in um, with the cleaned up chips and chip legs and stuff and pray that um, we get better results. All right, have the board in. Let's cross our fingers that it's better, or not at least not worse. All right, we got the game to boot. We still have our graphics issue. So yeah, this is um player Huh, when we initially used this game board, we got rid of that graphics issue. I don't know. Alright. So we, we still have our same issue, so it's uh can't be the game board. I don't think, can it? We have different game board. We have A and B. We can, um, I guess we can swap uh, B and A again and, and see if uh, if we get our audio issues and, and reproduce something worse. Okay, so uh, game board B, um, swapped B and A around. So let's there. see what we get. Now B is in the X3 position. Let's see what we get. Game is booting. All right, we still have. Looks a little bit better, right? I mean, that, that little graphic issue. I mean, it's not completely the same. But now our speech audio is bad. And speech audio is being driven by X3, so it's kind of like something's going on with the B chip um, and when we put it in the X3 position. Because now my... Yeah, same graphics. Wacky. Man. The, these customs suck. <laughs> Completely suck. Um, that's, yeah. So I guess um, there's nothing really I can do about this. Maybe put in the other custom. Game board B with um, chip F and A in there. So I'm using one from a 
the board that was working 100% it seemed, and one from uh, the original game board A. So A and F. Alright, let's see if we have our graphic issue. No graphics issue right there. Arcade player but a Earl Dot Warriors C and destroy the space target. Alright, that looks good. F and X3, um, our graphics issue was gone. <clears throat> so I would say that we definitely know it's related to the uh, to the custom chip there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to swap A with F um, and make sure that um, A being in X3 is 100% right. as well. <clears throat> um, A is in X3 and F is in uh, X2. So we so get here. Back. No graphics issue. Okay, player, but A. Earl Dot Warriors, C and destroy the space target. Yep, no graphics issue. Our there. issue is with that B chip. Um, and I'll probably try the original game board as well, just to verify it's working. Um, okay, still. The, this is a game board A with um, A and F on the same spots A and X3, F and X2. And we'll put it in. The one thing I'll say is um, even the sockets I replaced are single wipe and I'm going to replace these I think um, the next time well, this, on this game board I'm going to replace them with double wipes instead because I don't like the single wipes. It only It's only making contact on one side of the chip leg as well. Alright, All right, I'm ready to this. go with this board. This is the original board um, but I noticed that I have dip switch 4 set on which is for the foreign language. So if this doesn't come on, I think we know what our issue was at the um, beginning of the of this video. If it doesn't, yeah, see, I don't see anything on the screen. So it's you that dip switch four can't be on. I don't think. Let's. I hope. Let's see that that's the issue. I'm gonna change dip switch four. Because I do not have, that was um, from the first video I did, I was messing with the foreign language board. But I don't have the foreign language ROM board in there anymore. Alright, let's power it up. Boom, that, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so our game board is fine. And I don't see the graphics issue with this set of customs in there. So our issue was definitely the customs, which sucks. I was hoping it was something else. Arcade player button. I am not working on this yet. Yep, our issues are with the Data IO Customs Chip B. Only one of them was bad, but it looks like Chip B is not, um, is what was causing that issue, so. Okay, so since we figured out what our, um, our graphics issue is I'm going to go ahead and put in the test ROM um, again and just see if uh, what errors we get if any right, on the test in. ROM. Let's see what we get. Okay it says press fire for SRAM test now it's actually running. So yeah, the te it didn't come back right away. You see it's on the screen. Or how long does it run for? I mean, it's definitely different behavior. It says DRAM test uh, passed. Press fire for SRAM test. And DRAM test passed. Still flashes that check chip U21 message, but I guess you just have to sit here and let it run. So this is what it's supposed to look like, or the result that we should see. Um, because those data I/O customs weren't 100%, um, that's why we we were, you know, failing that test. Um, so now now you know, or now I know at least. 
Cool. All right. Um, I do. Ha I am going to do a couple more tests because I am. Um, well, actually, let me let me show real quick. I have I use um, some toilet bowl cleaner on the chip that was uh, marked bad. This is chip C and D, and um, I'm using some toilet bowl cleaner to uh, try to get the corrosion off the chip. So. I'm going to clean these chips up a little bit and then see if we can get these, uh, at least one of okay, them. Okay, um, so I pulled pulled the game board back out and I would say that um, that was the first time I ever used a toilet bowl cleaner. I just used this, I think I got it from Home Depot, this uh, heavy duty toilet bowl cleaner. It is, has, um, it's acidic so, it, you know, it will eat up some of the corrosion and stuff. And I would say the chips came out pretty good. Um, that I cleaned with it. I've never done it before and you know, I probably wouldn't do it to I Didn't want to experiment. I experimented on a chip. I knew that was questionable anyway, so but much better than what it was before I think that that one and and this one too. I let this one sit in there a little bit longer And it was corroded a little bit more even the inside of the legs um, Are much better now And they were they were uh, had rust and stuff on them So yeah, that one still has a little bit of rust. I don't think you can see it. If I can get it on the inside legs, a little bit of corrosion. But um, anyway, so I figured let's um, maybe swap them in here. I, I don't know. I either I leave A in X three and put them in. Um, x2 and figure it out that way i think that's what we'll do is we'll just rotate them into x2 or we'll rotate them into x3 th um, all right i figured figure you know x3 is more important so um we'll might as well just stick it in x3 and see if, what it does uh we'll go, go do the d <laughs> we'll do the d chip first and uh put that in x3 all right. and um, i already heard something that didn't sound right when i powered it on i think the coin counter went Oh, we still have the SRAM test in there, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound good, does it? All right. So I would say that that chip is not good. Um, number D, even after cleaning it. It would have been nice if uh, we got lucky. But let's go ahead and try to right, have the C chip in there right now with the test ROM. Well, we, it boots at least. It says uh, press fire for SRAM test. And it's running. I would say that means we, I, I, I would think that this means that uh, that chip is good. I had some hope for uh, one of these chips being okay. And the, pat, the test passed. Let's go ahead and uh, take out the test ROM and see if it um, Instead plays of fine. taking out the test ROM, I'm just going to swap in my uh, foreign board here real quick. Power it on. And we'll do that. Should I give up on that D chip? Uh, it's a little, little wonky with the graphics there. audio yep and our sounds messed up so this chip isn't a hundred percent but it's good enough to get the game to, to get the game to boot um, but it's definitely not a hundred percent oh that's too bad but at least it does uh, does boot I guess that's a positive um, I think I'm going to end this video series. We kind of knew know what was causing our initial um, graphic glitch, and it was one of the um, custom I/O chips on the game board. So I am going to come back and do maybe some testing because I know I have a bad memory card, and since I already have everything set out, um, I'll do another video of um, testing a bad memory card and maybe fixing some some DRAM or something. 
All right. Talk to you later. Bye.